just a minute if you're here say hello I would love to hear from you guys I'm gonna give everyone a minute to find me I need to post this on my Facebook group real quick I mean my Facebook page so give me just a second to get things raring here hi Robin and Debbie and Wendy welcome you guys I'm so glad you're here all right let me get this shared How's everyone doing? Did you guys enjoy Abby's presentation? Are you all pulling out your seed beads to make beaded beads this afternoon? <laughs> or morning, depending where you're at. Okay, one more share. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> oh my gosh, such a super fun weekend. All right, here we go. Hi! <laughs> I'm Heather Powers from Humble Beads. I'm a jewelry designer, bead maker, author, illustrator, and your all-around creative muse. And it's my job to get the beads off your bead table and into some jewelry. And I'm so excited to be part of the TGBE Fall Fest weekend. I've just been so inspired by everyone. I hope you guys got to see Kate's um, presentation on organizing your studio and a peek into her studio. That was really cool last night. Oh, thank you guys so much for all the hellos. Keep them coming. Please take a second and share this video so that we can get the word out. Don't forget to go over the TGBE um, page or the group so that you can sign up for the big swag bag giveaway. There's a $50 gift certificate in each of the bags. And I will be giving away two $50 gift certificates at the end of the video. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. I know, Gina, that video last night with Kate was so good. If you have to go watch something else from, um, just, just take a moment this week to watch that video. You guys will love it. All right. So our project today is the Harvest Home Knotted Bracelet. It's a simple, easy project. You're going to really enjoy it. I'm first going to start out by showing you guys how to make a clasp. And then we're going to put that bracelet together. It's going to whip up really quickly because it's one of those kind of projects that you got to love. <laughs> this is the kind of project you can um, do for shows and just mix and match the different colors. And you can see I have, oh, let's take off the little humble beads. You guys know who I am. <laughs> Hi everyone! Welcome, welcome! I am so glad you're here. All right, so here I've done two different colorways. I had three on, the, well, I had four on the website. I think we still have two of them. And then I just pulled a little combination from other beads that I have on the website that fit in with the project. So you're going to need dogwood leaves, six millimeter drukes, a little check glass bird and then I used a disc bead for my clasp one of my house beads and the disc bead and the house bead if you guys are new to humble beads those are things that I make on my own I mean by hand <laughs> on my own <laughs> well it's all on my own but uh <laughs> those are my artisan beads that I make out of polymer clay and as you can see I have those little houses 
and quite a little rainbow of colors on the website. So if you guys are interested in putting together your own kit, if they happen to sell out, then by all means, you can do that. All right, so let's just jump in. We're gonna need 18 gauge wire. You can use any kind of wire that you have on hand. I am going to use this natural brass para wire. And so it's a nice chunky, chunky guy. And you don't have to have these, but um, I'm gonna use them. And these are bail making pliers. If you don't have bail making pliers, you could grab um, something that's, you know, like a 3 8 inch wide, a pencil, a really skinny, I mean a pen, a really skinny marker. A pencil would probably be the closest if you don't have a pair of these. Debbie, I just added some more of these houses to the website. These are my um, falling leaves houses. And so, you know, they got the little autumn coloring going on with the leaves changing outside as they are, which I love. Okay, and I'm going to cut two seven inch lengths this wire. I probably won't need that much, but I just always feel better having more than I need. And again, this is 18 gauge wire. Oh yes, Sharpie markers work very well. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take the bail making pliers. I'm going to start just slightly above the center of this design. And I'm going to wrap this around. I didn't, I wanted to, I'm just cheating. <laughs> I went a little bit below the center is what I needed to do. Okay. And so, so that you guys can see what I'm doing. We're making the little hook on here and I have this side and I did a double just because I wanted it to be a little stronger and I don't know, I was feeling a little funky and wanted a double um, loop there. So I wrapped it around two times and started with the seven inch and slightly below the center because I had to wrap it around twice. I forgot about that. Oh, you know what? Let me just start over. I am going to need to start below the center. Because I have to wrap it back up around. There we go. That's better. All right. So I've wrapped it around and I have about two inches on the edge there. I'm going to grab these together and I wrapped it around two times and now I'm going to go up and through the loop. Oh, it's not easy doing this underneath the camera. <laughs> Just so you know. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this. I'm going to wrap it around the double loop two or three times and I'm just going to use my pliers to pull that in and around. Okay. That looks good. And you know what? Let's start with eight inches of wire if you guys do this after the video is playing. I just feel like just that little bit of extra wire just makes me feel safe. <laughs> I am going to grab my polymer clay disc bead and this one's, um, before I do that, I'm going to take this and squish it down so that my bead will lay flat on the top of that wire wrapping. Okay, go in the hole. <laughs> and I'm going to grab my regular round nose pliers. And I'm going to do a single loop on the bottom here. It's 
So I'm going to wrap that around my pliers. And then I'm going to go two times tightly wrapped around. And then I'm going to wrap on top of the tighter ones with a looser wrap to make a messy wrap on the top here. I'm going to push that around. You always want the end of your wire to be in the back if you can. Uh, so maybe just like a tiny, tiny bit short. So I really don't like the, uh, well, all right, this is what I'm going to do. In case you didn't hear that, I just twisted it <laughs> to get it going the right way. Okay, so there's my class. I'm going to hammer it in a minute, but I'm going to do the hook of my clasp now too. Using the 18 gauge wire, I'm going to cut eight inches just to be on the safe side. I'm going to start on the bottom. This is about two and a half inches. You could even do three inches from the bottom. I'm going to wrap this around twice around my pliers. So I'm making a little double loop here. And um, once I get that around, I'm going to push this that little neck back so that we can uh, have the wire centered above our loops. And I'm going to wrap around two times tightly and then two times loosely. And pinch that little end in. Okay, and now we're going to make the um, little hook on the top, and I'm going to use the pliers again, the bail making pliers. I'm going to bend that so that it's an angle. Oops. There we go. And I'm going to wrap this around the bail making pliers. Again, a thin Sharpie, a marker, anything that has Let's see exactly how big this is. Yeah, it's like 3 8 inch. Doesn't have to be exact. I do like to make this little hook small though, and that's because um, the wire is not that thick because it's copper plated wire, so it, it doesn't have a lot of strength on its own. So I am going to um, hammer it too, but uh, it's one of the reasons I'm making it small. Okay, I'm going to cut just like right in the center of my loop. And I'm going to take the end and bend it upward so we have a little hook. You're going to take your chain nose pliers and pinch that closed. And that is our little hook. There we go. And now I'm going to pull out the good old steel bench block and my ball peen hammer. And I'm sure I am committing some cardinal sin of wire wrapping and hammering where you're probably not supposed to hammer two, um, two layers like this. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I don't care. I'm breaking the rules. Maybe there's not a rule. In my mind, I just feel like I'm breaking the rule. Now, hammering it, it's called work hardening, and this is going to make your 
little loop stronger. So not only does it look cool, but you're strengthening it. And I'm gonna do the very end of my little loop on this side. And that is more for aesthetics. Okay, same thing on this side. Hammering on that double loop, it opens it up a little and gives it like this cool spiral look. I like it. <laughs> and this one, you definitely want to hammer. You don't want to hammer too much because hammering too much will make your wire thin and will defeat the purpose, but a nice even hammer over the whole thing will help so that this isn't going to move around on you. Okay, now, really, I'm breaking the rules. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just have an idea and you're like, yeah, I'm going to try it and see what happens. And I had the idea that I wanted some of the copper to show on the wire. So I know that this is brass plating or some kind of plating, brass colored plating on top of copper wire. So I'm gonna use a file. You can use an emery board if you don't have a file. You can use any of your flat jewelry files. And I'm just scuffing up. I'm leaving a little bit of the brass And I'm repeating it on the front and back. I don't know. I just wanted something different. I wanted something that looked a little more rustic. And so there we go. Now the bare copper is shining through. And I'm quite pleased. <laughs> I'm going to repeat the same thing with the loop part of the clasp, the eye. This is a hook and eye clasps, clasp, so this is the hook. <laughs> oh, Sue, you were sorting your beads so much you almost forgot to tune in. Holy cow, that's some dedication. <laughs> Hopefully you've made some headway sorting the beads. That's always the fun part. Okay, so just scuffing this up with the file on both sides, paying a little bit more attention to where things naturally would rub on um, in daily wear so that it looks, you know, like the effects of time and not just me wanting to look cool. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what the cool kids are going to do now? I don't know. Okay. There we go. I like them. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I cut 30 inches of four ply waxed linen. Um,. Emily, that is a great question. Emily asks, could you rough it up beforehand and then do the um, the wrapping? You could, but because I wanted it to look like it naturally happened, like, like that it was the effects of time and not just me um, roughing it up, that's why I did it afterwards so that it you could highlight the little accented parts a little bit more. Okay. Now I'm going to start with the side with the bead, the bead, not bead. Okay. I've taken the 30, 30, sorry, 36 inches, 36 inches of the wax linen. And I'm going to stick it through through the small hook on my clasp open up the loop and pull the thread through and that's your standard Lark's knot that we're starting with 
and now I'm going to separate the two strands and I'm going to tie one knot on each side of the strands. And these are just simple knots like, you know, like you would tie a shoot kind of knot. Just over the finger, pull it through the loop, and then push down as you tighten it so that the loop is right next, I mean the knot is right next to the two knots on the bottom there. Now I'm going to take my drukes and these are six millimeter drukes. Now any six millimeter size bead would work for this. You could do um, like an English cut. Oh, does English cut come in a size six? No, that's a size eight. Melons would be cool for this. Okay, I'm going to grab two Twisting my wax linen back onto itself because it started to unravel just a bit. Okay, and on the other side, I'm going to do two more. And these drukes are transparent with a little flash of eggplant colored glass, which is a dark, dark purple. And then they're etched and have a gold finish on them. So they, they work very well for autumn. Okay, I got my four beads on there. And now I'm going to take my two uh, strands together, wrap them around my finger, pull both the strands through the loop, and I'm going to push this down as close as I can to the bead to get that loop nice and tight. And then you can take the two strands and pull it to get it a little bit tighter. I'm going to repeat this three, uh, two more times. Oh, Sally, I'm going to answer your question and say that this little bead most certainly will work really well with the Howlite, the turquoise Howlite that uh, Abby has on her, in her kit. Yeah, that's definitely, those two colors would match beautifully. Okay, so got the two on here. taking them off because I forgot one important step. All right, we're going to repeat that little tiny knot on each side because it just helped the beads uh, lay a little better on the thread. So I'm repeating. I think I did this on every bracelet that I made <laughs> where I would forget to do that knot and have to take those beads off to do the knot. Okay, now we're going to put those four beads back on. Two on each side. And guys, um, I'm here by myself in the studio today, so I'm looking up every few seconds <laughs> to uh, see what your comments are. But if you have questions, I will definitely go back through and answer questions. And if you have, like, a really important question, tag me in it, Heather Powers or Humble Beads, so that I can um, make sure I don't miss it. Okay, so I'm going to push those beads down nice and tight, pull the two strands around my finger, pull the two strands through the loop, and then I'm going to push that knot as far down as I can to the beads, and then pull the two threads apart and that will tighten the knot up just a little bit more. And now you're going to do a knot on each side of the thread, I mean, wax linen. And this is four ply wax linen, in case you guys missed that. And I will post the, uh, the project supplies on my website, on the blog so that you can download that or shop easily. 
Okay, two on each side again. Oh, beads are cooking. Can you hear them in the background, guys? <laughs> okay, pushing this all the way down. And again, I'm going to wrap it around my finger. I'm going to tie that knot nice and tightly at the beads. Um, I'm not sure if you guys were asking. You could totally do this with any kind of knotting cord that you have. I personally like wax linen the best. I like um, the look and feel of it. I like that the knots are really secure with the wax and that I don't have to glue at the end. So if you're using some other kind of glue, um, definitely, I mean, some other kind of cord that doesn't have the wax on it, you'll want to use a little bit of thread glue at the end of your project when you put your clasp on. Bonnie, I do not have a discount code. We have the free beads with purchase. And so you can, um, you don't have to have any code or anything. You're just going to place your order and for every $50 spent oh can you guys tell I painted these beads today <laughs> for every $50 spent you're gonna get um, disc beads a free set of disc beads a pair of disc beads and I'll talk about that at the end of the video too okay so I put my two strands together and I'm gonna stick this through the house might have to get those a little bit tighter There, they separated. <laughs> okay, I'm going to push this through and make sure there's not a little clay stuck in there. I'm just taking my 18 gauge wire and making sure there's no little residue inside of my bead from when it was drilled. That was the trick. Yeah, you can see there was lots of dust in there. <laughs> okay, so I got my house on and I'm going to string on a four millimeter O bead, which is a glass bead. And this, um, this just adds a little tiny metallic sparkle under that house which for some reason I just felt like it had to have it <laughs> I'm just taking off some of the extra wax that that bead pulled down okay well, now I'm going to do a knot with both of the cords pulling it through And tightening it nice and tight. And now it's time to add our bird. Now the two beads are not, I mean the two cords are not going to go through the bird. So we're going to use the cord that's on the top is going to go inside the bird. And the cord on the back is going to hold that bird in place. And these are check glass birds. We have them in every color you can imagine on the website. And I think I'm going to go with the slightly f less flashy side on my bracelet. It has a gold AB finish on one side. Okay, so just did a nice tight little knot there. And now we're ready to do our leaves. And I'm going to grab three of my leaves. And we're going to be repeating the same technique where we're um, just going through the one strand of the wax linen. You can see on the back how that looks. Well, maybe if I pull it up. <laughs> oh, guys, you don't need to add any code to the website. 
um, to get the free beads, we automatically add that together. And um, people have been shopping all weekend, so we tally up your orders and add the free beads based on the amount of all your orders from the weekend. Okay, so I put this one going up, had the first one going down, now going up. Doing that same little knot. Repeating one more time. And now we're ready to do the seed bead portion of my bracelet. And we're using size eight, no, excuse me, size six seed beads, which are about a four millimeter bead. And I have a little mix of um, metallic and clear, well, it's like a frosted, and then some blues, metallic brown. And I'm going to do five beads on each side. Making sure I alternate the beads. And I'm going to repeat on the other strand. Oh my gosh, there's some ferocious dogs in the neighborhood barking. I'm just trying to mix up the order that I'm using this, I mean, that I'm placing these on so that it looks random. <laughs> I worked really hard to make it random. Okay. Again, these are size six seed beads. Okay. I got my two strands there, five beads on each side. And I'm going to do that simple knot again. And I'm going to repeat this one more time. And then the bracelet's almost done, you guys. Tanya, it's one of those that just whip up really quickly. Especially if you're not explaining how to make it to someone. <laughs> then it goes by super fast. Last bead here. Make it a good one. <laughs> and I did choose my wax linen color so that it would um, stand out and pop against the beads. So in case you were wondering, why did I pick orange? Well, not only is it in the art bead, but also the teal or blue and orange are complementary colors across from the color wheel, so they make each other seem brighter when they're used next to each other. So here's the bracelet so far, and now I am ready to tie on my clasp. Put some of the beads off to the side here. Okay. So I'm going to take the two strands of the cord together, pull it through, I'm going to push this down a little so you can see up close exactly what I'm doing. So I've, I've pulled the two strands through the loop and I'm going to tie it once wrapping it around like this so it's going around underneath the loop and I'm taking the two ends and pulling it up through my loop and pull that nice and tight 
Now I'm going to separate these two guys. And I'm going to tie them. And it's going underneath the loop on the wire. I'm going to turn it over. Tie another knot. I'm doing this three times. So that I have a nice secure knot under there. And one more time. Oops, sorry. Hope I was on the camera. So <laughs> again, I'm not going to tie it, but just so you know, I just took the two strands, wrapped it over each other like this, and then did a knot. Yeah, it won't hurt to do one more. So I did that three times. Oh. Did I go off the camera again? Sorry. And I'm going to grab two four millimeter um, cornerless cube beads. These are copper. You can use any metal beads on the end. Or you could use, if you don't have metal beads, you could totally use um, one of these little bronze bronze seed beads that would work too. And I'm going to tie a knot. And repeat on the other side. Take my slightly dull scissors. <laughs> oh goodness. And trim off. I'm leaving about um oh like an eighth of an inch. Maybe a little shorter. And I'm gonna unravel the ends. Just a personal preference. Okay. So here is my finished bracelet. I did that in under 40 minutes. <laughs> okay. Yes, you guys, this video will be available on my YouTube channel or here on my Facebook, or you can go back to the Great Beat Extravaganza group and rewatch the videos when your kits come in. And all right, <laughs> Gina, I do need some sharp scissors. The problem is I buy lots of sharp little scissors and they grow legs and run away all the time. I don't know. I don't know. They just sprout and take off. It happens here in the studio. Okay, let me straighten out my camera. All right, so there's the bracelet. Super easy, super fun. You guys, I am paying attention now. So if you have questions that I didn't answer, go ahead and put that in the group, I mean, in the chat, and I will be glad to answer. And hi guys, I am seeing you um, watching from YouTube too. <laughs> Yes, they need a do not touch <laughs> scissor gremlins. Yes, that's so true. Okay, the special for the weekend has been going on all week. So if, no matter if you've, anytime you've placed Humble Be an order on Humble Beads this week, we've been adding up. Um, sorry, we will add up your orders and it's, end of the weekend, we'll take all of your or combined orders, and for every $50 that you've spent, we will give you guys a free pair of disc beads. And I try to match them to your order the best I can. So that's the free gift. You don't need to do any codes or anything. It's automatically added to your order for TGBE, and we take all your orders, combine them, refund any shipping that you may have uh, gotten. And so that 
is that story. Elizabeth, you bought some disc beads. Yay! We worked really hard on those and I think they turned out really beautiful in all the different fun color combinations that we had. And we can go back to the camera and I can show you guys. These are the two that I added this morning. We added um, quite a few sets yesterday. I don't even remember which, but um, Pumpkin Patch and Wildflowers are the two sets that I added today. And you guys can see the design goes all over the bead and changes from one end to the other. And disc beads are my favorite bead shape to work with. Love adding them in my jewelry designs and perfect for earrings. Oh, great, Lori, you're gonna make a bracelet today. Yes, and you guys use whatever you have on hand. Like these little guys could be four millimeter fire polished. They don't have to be seed beads. Any six millimeter bead, you need some leaves, a bird. You could even use, um, it doesn't have to be a glass bird. You could use a little humble beads bird. How cute would that be? <laughs> so these little guys, we have them, um, and I'm actually, this is a little earring I made to wear today. So those little guys, they're sold in pairs on the website and we have them in several different colors. And I haven't looked on the website, but I added these guys today. I don't know if they've sold out or not yet, but these are all new. We have a little rainbow of humble beads, birds. You know, that's what I'm most famous for are my little birds. <laughs> And so these are polymer clay, Debbie. All of my um, artisan beads are polymer clay. And the little bird that I used on my bracelet here is check glass. And Kelly he asked, what was the gauge of the wire? And we have 18 gauge wire. And I will put a supply list up on the website, on the blog, and post that on my Facebook group so that you guys can grab that. <laughs> I do have some little bird houses, right? So cute. Okay, so last thing I want to talk to you guys about before I take off, November 3rd through the 5th, I'm having an online retreat. We are going to be making beads and jewelry and mixed media components. It's going to be super fun. So so inspirational and if you guys like to work with mixed media if you want to expand your repertoire of jewelry making techniques definitely check out the retreat we have 10 kits left still and then after that um, we won't have any more kits we only have 10 more kits that we'll be sending out so after that you'll be able to um, sign up for the retreat but you'll have to gather all of the supplies on your own if you guys cannot make it during that date, you can watch the replay of the videos at any time. It'll be available for lifetime access in the classroom and along with the Zoom videos that'll be recorded. You guys also have a PDF workbook with all the directions written out, just like you would find in a jewelry book. All right, I think that's almost it. Let me also tell you guys on Tuesdays, I do Bead Table Tuesday at 3 p.m. And I do a free project. So it's something new every week. This week, I'm going to be using washi tape to make earrings because I have a ridiculous supply of washi tape and I'm trying to find ways <laughs> to use it. And then on Fridays, at 3 p.m. I do the Humble Beads coffee break where I'm just sharing with you what's new in the store and I do a quick, really quick little earring or um, tip project. One day we did everything on color and the retreat guys, I'm pretty sure that's what you were asking about. The retreat is on Zoom and then it has its own dedicated classroom where you guys can find all of the materials. <laughs> You don't have to have any painting or drawing skills, you guys. We're actually using images on here on the website. I mean, on the retreat, we're using images from art history. So I have um, John Audubon birds and William Morris designs. So you don't have to uh, 
you don't have to um, come up with any drawing skills. <laughs> and then all of the beads, I'll pull out my little, little beads here for you guys. So we're going to be making these ginkgo beads. And these are actually polymer clay. And it's all different layers of polymer clay. I'm going to show you guys how to do a ginkgo leaf. You can see there's the ginkgo leaf on there. And then two flower designs. And then we're going to put them all together to make the beads. You do not have to be... Um, you can be a brand new polymer clay newbie. And I'm going to walk you through step by step how to make the beads. Of course, I've been making the beads for... 26 years so it's going to take you some practice <clears throat> to get um the kind of results you want but you are definitely going to make lots of cool beads for the weekend and love them i can guarantee you that all right let's do the giveaway we're going to do two giveaways i'm going to do one that is going to be um live right now and i'm going to ask a question you guys answer the question and the first person that I see the comment from is going to win. And then the second one I'm going to pick from the comments, the correct answer from all the comments that come in because some people are on Facebook, I mean, YouTube, and some people um, live out in the country and have slow internet. So one of them I'm gonna do live and the first person to answer will get the prize. And then the other gift certificate that I'm going to draw will be from everyone who answers the question so that, um, so that everyone gets a fair chance. Oh guys, I'm so excited that you cannot wait for the retreat. I can't wait for the retreat. I love retreats, whether they're in person or online. All right. So here is my question. Guys, get those fingers ready. So it's the first person that answers this question. I am going to pick one from the, the live here. And then after the video, I'm going to pick another one from everyone who, uh, who answers so that, sorry, lost my train of thought <laughs> reading your, reading your things so that everyone gets a fair chance. Okay. So my question is, it's a pretty easy one. What do I make my beads out of the artisan beads? What are those made out of? First person to answer will get a $50 gift certificate. Thank you, Beth. I'm excited about the retreat. I can't wait. Hi, Lisa. All right, still waiting for the first person to answer. What do I make my beads out of? Oh, Robin Noble, you are the winner. Now, remember guys, it's the first person that I see, so it may be different on your screen, but Robin Noble is the first person to pop up. But don't worry guys still answer the question at the um i'll give you guys till the end of the day so if you're watching this later at uh at the end of the presentations everybody's presentations at the end of um christy's presentation i will go back through and look at everyone who answered palmer clay and pick one of the winners randomly from everyone who answered well i gave them, well yeah Whoever, anyone who answers the, the question will get um, a chance to win the $50 gift certificate, the second one. The first one's Robin Noble. Robin, please email Jess at Mr. Humblebeads, all one word, at gmail.com. So Mr. Humblebeads at gmail.com. And uh, there's how you spell Humblebeads. So mrhumblebeads at gmail.com and Jess will get that gift certificate sent out to you so you can have fun shopping. All right, guys. Uh, Lori, the new beads are all listed. Everything's on the website. If something's not on the website, it has sold out already. So thank you guys so much. I cannot wait to watch um, Cynthia for Green Girl Studios coming up next. You guys get a half an hour plus 10 minutes to uh, have a snack, take a bathroom break, and of course, do some shopping. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me. You guys can find Kits and Beads at HumbleBeads.com. 
and I'll look forward to watching the presentations with you guys all day long. I'll talk to you later. Oh, um, Cheryl just asked if there's a discount code. Cheryl, there's not a discount code. We add free beads to your order every $50 spent. You will get an, a set, I mean a pair of these artisan disc beads and there's no limit. So as many $50 as you spend, you get one pair of disc beads. So you can have a whole little collection with your order and we combine all the orders from the weekend. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please share and give it a little thumbs up or a like so that other people can see it. And we'll see you guys for Cynthia's presentation next at, um, I think it's 2.30 is when she starts Eastern Standard Time. All right, guys, but check your schedules because um, I may be wrong about that time. <laughs> Take care. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting us. We really appreciate you. Don't forget to go to the Great Beat Extravaganza group and or enter for the um, giveaway for the swag bag. All right, guys. Take care. Have fun watching the rest of the presentations.